In the midst of the Vietnam War, a U.S. Navy pilot battles to survive after crashing into the territory of their adversaries. In 1965, few people expected the situation in Vietnam to escalate into a full-scale war. America's bombing of secret targets within Laos is one of the first signs of what's to come. In a USS Ranger at the Gulf of Tonkin, Lieutenant Dieter Dengler with his fellow Navy pilots are briefed on their mission to disrupt their enemy supply over North Vietnam, which requires them to cross into Laos. Labeled as a classified mission, they are not permitted to write letters or make phone calls to their loved ones. Watching a video on how to survive the jungle, the troop doesn't take it seriously and instead laughs at the actor on the screen. Granted the option to adjust the given necessities for their mission, Dieter requests a zip mosquito net where he can stay through the night and a modification on his boot that will allow him to hide his American passport. Furthermore, their general instructs them to shift direction and altitude every 7 seconds so that the enemy's gun radar cannot lock onto them. Necessarily, he reminds them to discard their radios or anything the enemy can use against them because they can use it to lure their rescue teams into an ambush. Before concluding, the general also acknowledges that this is Flight Lieutenant Dengler's first mission. Once on the mission, the pilots roll into their respective target sites. After successfully firing on his target, the enemy hits Dieter's aircraft wing, causing him to lose altitude. Despite being ordered to bail out, Dieter refuses, crashing him along with the aircraft. He survives the crash, but the enemy pursues him running away. Successfully hiding from the enemy, he leaves his radio behind, as his superior reminded him. The following hours and days, the pilot hides both from the enemy and the locals. He even makes use of the modified mosquito net he requested. To be easily noticed by the rescue search planes, he then seek some place with high topography. Feeling the tropical heat, he seeks a water source to freshen up. Little does he know, he's now surrounded by armed Laotians who's been pursuing him. The group holds him captive in a local village and ties him to the ground, directly facing the sunlight. Due to the language barrier, he's unable to communicate with them. Later on, the Laotians bring Dieter into the wilderness. Being their captive, he observes and learns from their survival skills, such as setting a fire with bamboo. They all hide whenever American helicopters helicopters fly overhead. Enraged at Dieter, believing that he signals the Americans. Riding in a truck with Laotian troops, they transport him to some estate where they meet a man who appears to be a respected official. Reasoning his love for his country, Dieter refuses to sign the paper that guarantees him freedom. With this decision, he's sent out of the office, and his captors take him back. They subject him to capricious punishments such as being pulled by a carabao, hanging upside down with sting bees, and being plunged in a human human-sized well where only his face floats for breathing. The next day, his captors lead him to a prison camp where he meets fellow prisoners Duane and Jean, U.S. Air Force pilots, and YC, Fizit, and Proset, who all flew in Air America, shot down to land just like him. Imprisoned for more than a year, Duane says that they will be there a lot longer when the war starts. Attempting to tell them that the war has already begun, Jean interrupts, specifically assuming there will be no war. One by one, Jean familiarizes the new prisoner with the guards, who include the worst guard, Little Hitler, the only nice guard, Jumbo, also not a good guy, Nook the Rook, the bastard, Crazy Horse, and the one who doesn't talk, Walkie Talkie. Later, Dieter finally informs the group of the ongoing war between the US and Vietnam, which Jean believes wouldn't happen. When Dieter declares that he'll escape the camp, Jean immediately counters that his plan will jeopardize their release. Meanwhile, Duane is more concerned about Dieter's survival in the forest with without water, so Dieter inquires when it will rain, which Fizit estimates will begin in 5 or 6 months. If he ever survives the jungle without water, Duane adds that he will struggle to escape the camp because 6 guards are posted during the day. Smiling, Dieter claims that he will then flee at night, but his smile quickly fades as the rest of the group responds with silence. At night, they are tied together by cuffs while their feet are also restrained to a piece of wood. Suddenly, Dieter asks if anyone has a nail, but the prisoners only giggle noting that the entire structure is built of rattan and bamboo. Seconds later, Prosset gets up, proclaiming he knows where to find one. The next day, sighting the nail at their imprisoner's hut, Dieter orders the group to scatter in different directions. Following his instructions, the captives draw the guard's attention, leaving the hut alone with Jumbo. Dieter approaches the friendly guard, pretending to grab some toothpaste from the hut while his other hand removes the pinned nail from the wood. Once back at their hut, Dieter directs YC to cuff and make 
a noise while he strikes the nails so the guards won't hear. Locked up again at night, Dieter uses his made-up key to release their hands, giving them freedom for a few hours. The next day, Dwayne commends Dieter on the ability he demonstrated last night. When Dieter suggests they can escape to Thailand through the Mekong River, Dwayne cautions him to quit talking about escaping. Then, Dwayne walks away. So Dieter instead asks Jean who among them knows the most about the land. Jean answers that it is Fizzit. However, the man doesn't speak to them because he is upset about something they don't even remember. Suddenly, the appearance of helicopters in the skies enrages the guards, prompting little Hitler to shoot Dwayne near his ear. While Dieter helps Dwayne clean the blood off his head, the guards enter, and little Hitler places a gun at Dieter's head. The two guards hysterically laugh at the American after little Hitler clicks the gun, revealing that it is truly empty. During the night, the men stare at the labels of various canned foods on their walls, which solely feed their eyes. The next day, Dwayne inquires as to how Dieter ended up becoming a pilot ranger. Dieter recounts that it has always been his dream ever since a fighter plane nearly crashed on them when he was a child. Giggling at his narrative, Dwayne states the strangeness of Dieter for wanting the job of a man who almost killed him. As the night comes again, the prisoners sit together, and Dieter expresses his hope for rain. Hearing this, Jean becomes irritated, claiming that his escape plan will endanger the rest he'll leave behind and their chances of being released. Dieter assures them that he will not desert them since they will all escape together. Still hoping for their liberation, Jean warns that if Dieter pushes to escape, he'll scream loud enough for the guards to hear them and shoot Dieter. Visited by Viet Cong soldiers the next day, a female soldier discovers a bottle shard from Prosset. In a foreign language, she starts shouting at the prisoners, so Dieter smiles and explains that it is for shaving. Seeing his smile, the woman smiles back before proceeding to leave. Later, the thought of the female soldier doesn't seem to leave Dieter's mind. Dwayne inquires that he thought Dieter has a wife, so while Dieter starts talking about his fiance, Crazy Horse plays with a gun without knowing how to use it. Thus, the weapon starts shooting around, causing everyone to jump from their seat. Lying face down on the table, Dieter spots pieces of rice, and an idea comes into his mind. Stacking his leftover rice, Dieter is surprised by his fellow prisoners singing him a happy birthday. Instead of asking for a gift, he's the one who gives his friends a present. He shows his handcrafted knives fashioned from cartridge shells and keeps one for himself while the other two go to YC and Prosset. Showing them the rice he collected, he tells them to hide their rice as well for their escape. With a plan to reverse the role of the camp, he explains that when the guards eat in the kitchen, they always leave their rifles behind. If they get the guns, they can hold them hostage for days until they can signal the rescue plane for help, a plan Jean still considers foolish. When the guards leave to eat, the prisoners begin freeing themselves from their cuffs. Using his mirror, Dieter checks where the guards and their rifles are, while Dwayne uses pieces of stone and wood to mark which hut the guards are in. Sighting Nook the Rook walking back, they immediately lock themselves up. During their lunch, Jumbo brings them extra rice. Instead of consuming it, Dieter preserves it, and the group continues imagining different food enough to satisfy their appetite. Returning to their prison cabin, the prisoners once again try checking where the guards are. Dwayne is still responsible for repositioning the wood and stones to indicate which hut the guards are in. When everyone suddenly falls silent, Dwayne looks up just to see little Hitler pointing a gun at him. To please the guard, Dwayne pretends and reasons that he's just playing a game. Later that evening, they cut the rattan connecting the bamboo floor using their handcrafted knife. Dieter steps outside, crawls on the ground, and with just his first attempt, he quickly loosens a portion of the bamboo fence of the camp. The following day, Dieter advises the group to set a date for the execution of their plan. Observing that the guards are starving as well and becoming increasingly mean. While Jean remains opposed to his plan, the rest of the group now agrees with Dieter on the need to escape. Hence, Dieter sets the 4th of July to be the day of their independence. One day, little Hitler is upset, bringing the prisoners worms and insects to eat instead of proper rice. Jean informs Dieter that they had it when it was really terrible two years ago. With no one wanting to eat the insects anymore, Jean persists in eating his rice. Dieter objects to him with a claim that it is their rice, so he can't eat it. Starting eating the worms, he adds that he will not let him out of his handcuffs during the night. When the night comes, Dieter does as he says and refuses to use the key to free them despite Dwayne's request since he will defecate again, as he does every night. The following day, Dwayne convinces Dieter to apologize to Jean, which his friend gladly accepts, thereby rekindling their friendship. 
Still in handcuffs, the prisoners are awakened by Little Hitler and Crazy Horse, who abruptly walk into their prison cabin. When a helicopter flies overhead, the guards believe that the prisoners signal the enemy and start firing on the ground, making Dwayne break down and cry. Understanding the foreign language, YC overhears the guards' discussion. He then explains to the group that guards are having food difficulty because the village has been struggling to grow rice since the bombing of the fields. Worse, the guards badly want to return to their village, so they intend to march them out into the jungle and kill them, making it look like they escaped. With this news, and still a day short from their planned escape, they decide to reschedule their execution earlier the next day. The following day, after successfully leaving their prison cabin, Dieter collects the guards' firearms and returns to his friends. As he instructs, he and Duane proceed to the other side of the fence while others move to the opposite side, and they will all meet at the kitchen to encircle the guards simultaneously. Upon attacking, the group that is supposed to come out from the opposite side doesn't show up, ruining their plan to hold the guards captive. Despite this, Dieter manages to kill two guards, including Little Hitler, while the rest run away. Stunned by the attack, Jumbo is unable to leave, so Dieter lets him run away. Before the rest of the guards return, Dieter and Duane leave the camp without finding their boots. At the bottom of a mountain rock, the two come across YC and Jean, who Dieter questions about their failure to show up despite hearing the gunshot. Asking where they found their shoes while his and Dwayne's are missing, Jean responds that Visit took both of their shoes. Also noticing Jean's rifle, Dieter wonders where he obtained it from, and the man also answers that they just found it somewhere. Before walking separate ways, Dieter trades his ammunition with one of Jean's machetes, and the two never look back at Jean, who seems unaware of where to go. When the rain starts pouring, Dieter and Dwayne use a leaf to shelter themselves while eating their stacked rice. Moments later, the water from the mountain's peak surges down causing the two to fall with it and lose their rice. Soon, the two eventually find their way to the river. They construct a raft and float down the water, hoping it will lead them near Thailand. Unfortunately, they realize that the river's mouth is a massive waterfall. To avoid falling into the fall, they swim their way to the shore. Staying under the rain, the two remove the leeches attached to their skin. The following day, Dieter quietly awakens Duane as a local man is fishing in the river. Continuing their journey, Dieter finds a shoe and gives it to Duane. While Duane wears the shoe, Dieter suggests that they ditch their guns because they can't fight the Viet Cong with it and can't even use it for hunting due to the noise. As the days pass, it is evident that Duane is growing tired. Dieter assists his friend in getting to move until they come across an abandoned village. While he motivates Duane to remain strong, choppers fly by but fail to notice their presence on the ground. Due to exhaustion and hunger, Duane begins imagining the voices of the guards. Dieter lets his friend rest while he sets fire fire to attract the helicopter's attention. The fire indeed attracts the choppers, but instead of sending help, they shoot him, mistaking him for an enemy. When Duane wakes up the following day, the two leave the place, fearful that the Viet Cong will track them down after the big fire they made last night. Later that day, they emerge from the woods and come upon local men carrying machetes. Despite kneeling and begging, one of the men still hacks off Duane's head. Enraged, Dieter loses his cool and picks his own machete, scaring the locals away. He takes Dwayne's shoe and hides again from the locals. Late at night, Dieter awakens to the sound of Dwayne's voice speaking to him. Hiding at the riverside, Dieter sets his eyes on a group of Viet Cong soldiers. When the soldier leaves, he rushes to retrieve their leftover grilled meat. While eating the meat, he once again hallucinates Dwayne sitting beside him, whining about his freezing feet. When Dieter takes off the shoe to give to Dwayne, his friend has already vanished. On the riverbed, Dieter captures a snake and eats it raw. Moments later, Hearing an approaching plane, he waves with a banana leaf so the aircraft will take notice of him. Finally, the plane spots Dieter, followed by two choppers to rescue him. While Dieter is being saved, the Viet Cong soldiers come out of the woods to attack but are quickly shot down by the second chopper. After asking questions to verify his identity, the soldiers that rescue him confirm that he is indeed Flight Lieutenant Dieter Dengler. Upon landing, two CIA men in black welcome him, informing everyone who witnesses his arrival that he is returning from a classified operation. Resting in a military hospital, the two gentlemen question Dieter about his experience in the enemy's territory. Fortunately, his Navy friends arrive with a birthday cake on a trolley, even though it is not actually his birthday. The group requests that the men allow them a few
few minutes with their buddy to read a personal message from his fiance. When the two CIA agents walk out, his friends inform Dieter that those men intend to bring him back to Guam for debriefing. Knowing that he won't want that as well, the friends leave the building with Dieter hiding in the trolley where they place the cake. Arriving at the USS Ranger, Dieter is greeted by everyone's bright and joyful faces. Asked if he can impart whatever he learned from his experience, Dieter says, empty what is full, fill what is empty, scratch where it itches. Soon after his rescue, Dieter leaves active duty and becomes a civilian test pilot, surviving four more plane crashes. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.